Your body has the ability to self-heal and self-regulate, but unfortunately we stuff things in dark corners and filter our senses so that experience of life feels safe. So very often we, we create the problems and the attitudes and everything that actually stop the body from being able to heal itself. And those are very, very important to realise. And in Body Talk we need to look at those things where we are self-sabotaging us in the certain ways that we behave, the belief systems we have and the life we live. How does the body heal itself? Well, the one thing we know is that the more the body understands why it's sick, the more it understands the cause of the disease, the better it will respond. And sometimes it's, it's quite amazing, you know, we, we often think we're pretty smart, but I've been in practice now for nearly 40 years, and um, pa patients never cease to amaze me. I remember one guy with a stomach ulcer, and um, I uh, was saying, you know, look, what I'm getting from the ulcer, you've also got a bad liver problem. If, yeah, yeah, I eat fat and terrible, terrible. I get all bloated and terrible. And I said, yeah, I really think it's probably the drinking. You're doing drinking. And he says, what's drinking got to do with my indigestion and liver problems? You get that from food, not drink. And I said, well, what do you drink? And he says, oh, hardly anything. I have a, a dozen beers and a bottle of scotch <laughs> a night. And I said, you know what? That's the cause of your problem, including your stomach ulcers. That's the major factor. And the, indo the indoctrination you had over the years um, to get you to do something like that. The interesting thing about it is how selective our thinking is, because this guy was a veterinary scientist. You sh probably should know better, but I guess he's never treated patients that do drink too much and things like that. Um, not too many animals have liver problems from over drinking scotch or beer. He should have known better, but you know, we're so good that we can just cut those things out. We can say, oh, it's not that, it's not that. It's not all, you know, my mood swings and sugar swings and everything isn't because I eat ice cream all day. You know, it, it's got to be something else. It must be the Brussels sprouts that they make me eat at, at dinner time. But in fact, the interesting thing to realise, in fact, you've all been given little pamphlets and you'll notice you've all got different ones. There's write-ups on different parts of the body, so you may want to swap them around later. If you've got the, the, ki the kidneys, you may want to swap it for a liver. But we under in Body Talk, we understand the psychology of the various parts of the body. Um, and this is a, a fascinating thing because often people just don't realise how much all this ties in. So, you know, many injuries and many things that are going wrong uh, belong to these tie-ins. So we get an example um, of someone who sprains their ankle, badly sprains their ankle. What will happen there is, in Buddy Talk, we often talk about a person who is a walking ankle waiting to happen. And, um, you know, you can sort of step on a stone and go over a bit and nothing happens, and then one time you step on it and you go over and bang, bad ankle problem. And it works a bit like this, because the ankle is actually controlled on the outside by the, the gallbladder meridian, which is involved with the decision making. It's not just the gallbladder, but the meridian actually hooks to a part of the brain, section eight of the thalamus, which, we're, I'm sorry, to the amygdala of the brain, that is the decision maker in the brain. And then the inside of your ankle is primarily called by the spleen, spleen meridian, which is the subconscious, but also even conscious worrying mechanism. When we worry about something, we think about something, we're thinking and worrying. Well, just say um, you're a guy and you're thinking of uh, asking a girl to marry you. And of course you're worried about it. You're thinking about it, you've got to make a decision. And it's really hard, tough to make because you've got to decide if she's good enough for you. You know, is she wealthy enough? Does she father own a hotel? And all the important things. And um, this goes on and it's um, ah, uh, um, ah. Uh. In other words, you can't make the decision. And when that goes on, then what happens is you create instability in the ankle. And eventually the body will get sick of it. And you'll just go for a simple little walk, slight trip, and bang, you're in real trouble. You've damaged your ankle. Now you're in hospital. 
the ankle swells and the swelling solidifies it to make you make the decision. That's how the body subconsciously works. And you're lying in there, the decision's pretty easy. Oh yeah, I will marry, I'm going to need someone to look after me. Um, so, we just see this all the time. And it's very practical. Uh, and in Australia, I was very involved in um, healthcare with um, football players. Um, this is Australian football, the real football. You know, where we don't wear all those pads and big helmets and everything. We actually just go out there in a shirt and pair, pair of pants and pulverise each other. And, um, but there's a time in the middle of the season, for six weeks, where a club can make a bid on another play, player. And it's all done top secret because the player doesn't want his mates to know that he's, at the end of the season he's going to change clubs. But it can be a pretty big decision because you've got to move into state, kids, all that type of thing. And so during that time there's a lot of um, ah, uh, will I, won't I, etc. And it's interesting because that six week period accounts for 90% of all ankle injuries that occur on the field. And it's so much so that coaches know that the guy injures his ankle on the field and he's carried off. They don't ask him how's the ankle, they ask him what club and how much are they asking, offering you. It's that, you know, it's that clear cut. And so it goes on with all the different parts of the body. And um, that's the body telling you a story. So if you've injured a part, injured a joint, a muscle, anything like that, basically your body talker will automatically know a starting point because they know the psychology of what's going on in your life to have that injury occur. They aren't accidents, they aren't accidental injuries. They're, they're set up by what's going on in your life, the momentum of your life. And sometimes the injury is, a, is what's going to force you to slow down, look at what's going on, reassess things and so on. It's the same for organ problems too, but a lot of people think of sports injuries as, in, as accidents. But my history in sports medicine, and I've treated the highest level at the Olympic level and you know, uh, national level, I've still yet to see an injury that, I didn't have, that, that didn't have a psychology going on behind it, okay, that we can analyse. So even from our athlete here, we have all the different things, all the different body parts that according to her story, according to what's going on in her life, she's going to manifest even her sports injuries accordingly. And um, it's important. I've, I've known sports people and you know what's going on in their life. You also know what's going to happen to them over the next few weeks and what type of injuries they're going to get. It's a, it's a giveaway, big giveaway.